Hello, welcome to Baking with Jen. I'm Jen and happy Ostara or the pagan, um, pagan Easter. So for today, we are going to make some kind of Easter-y things. Today on the menu, we have hot cross buns and oatmeal cream pies. Um, I do have the recipes in the link below. So if you want to check those out, go ahead and take a look. So, um, so today we're going to start with making the dough for the hot cross buns because that needs to rise for a little bit. And then we'll start on the oatmeal cream pie. So the oatmeal cookies and we'll get everything all juggled and baked by the end of the day. We'll see how it goes. So let's start off with our hot cross buns. Let me show you the recipe that we're working with today. I did get this from like a pagan website um, about the holiday today. So it is the spring equinox. So today the day and night should be about equal. And this right here is the recipe that we are working with. So it's this hot cross buns recipe. Um, I'm not gonna add walnuts or raisins, but we'll add the yeast. Um, but we're not adding walnuts or raisins just because um, not everybody likes those. We have people in the house that are allergic to walnuts. I personally am not a huge fan of raisins. So we're just gonna do our hot cross buns, no add-ins. So let's get this started. I'm gonna remove this and this. Oh, this means. Oh, there we go. Oh. Mute. There we go. And everybody should be on mute. Good. All right. Ooh, that's too tight. Too tight. There we go, much better, much better. All right, so start off with the hot press buns. It says three cups of all-purpose flour. So one cup is 120 grams. We need 360 grams of all-purpose flour. And now you guys can't really see my scale here, so we're just gonna weigh that out really fast. One of these days, I might be able to actually get all of this weighed out ahead of time. Well, not for the moment. Um, we can just do it like that. That's fine. 219, 317. So we're going up to 360. Um, 363. Ooh, close enough. I'm actually good with that. So we'll stay there. Um, so looking at this recipe, it basically says mix everything together. Cool, because let's see, and it has to be, it says to preheat your oven, but then you have to wait an hour for the rolls to rise. So we're not gonna preheat the oven just yet. But anyway, it says, pre, it says, well, the oven is warming, combine all ingredient, ingredients except yeast, hot water, the egg, and the frosting ingredients, mix well. We're just gonna, well, we're not gonna add the frosting ingredients, but we're gonna mix, we're just gonna mix it all. Um, we will start with the, with the dry ingredients first though. Um, so we have our flour. Next we need three quarters cups of granulated sugar. So one cup of sugar is 200 grams, three quarter cup is 150. So 150 grams, nine. Seven, one hundred, one thirty, one forty, thirty six, thirty nine, fifty, hundred and fifty. There we go. Three quarter cups of sugar. And, um, see so one cup of green milk. We're not doing that right now. Um, like I said, we'll do our liquid ingredients here in a little bit. So anyway, let's 
Keep going. So we're not going to do the milk yet. Butter, we'll add that here in a minute as well. Um, I forgot to bring my butter out to soften it, so it's sitting out over here. And we're going to try to wait as long as possible before we add it in so that it has some time to um, soften. That's the word. <laughs> All right. So um, butter and milk, those are going to be on hold for a minute. Uh, eighth teaspoon salt. If you think I'm going to measure an eighth of a teaspoon with anything other than my hands, you don't know me very well. So I'm going to say that's about an eighth of a teaspoon. It's like you bring it all together. It's probably closer to like a quarter teaspoon, but shh. We'll just pretend. Okay. So right now we have flour, sugar, salt. Uh, let's see, one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon. So um, cinnamon has a fun little holy thing. You can use that if you want, but I'm just gonna pour it in my hand. That looks good. A big pile of cinnamon. Add a little bit of extra for color if you want. Um, some more cinnamon, I think. Maybe, maybe not. There's probably cinnamon sitting around somewhere. No, I have cinnamon somewhere. I just need to find it. Anyway, it's like I have allspice somewhere too. This calls for a quarter teaspoon of allspice. I can't yeah. find my allspice. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little shake of nutmeg and a little shake of cloves. Now with cloves, you do want to be careful. This can be very, very strong flavor. So just a little shake of cloves. And I'm going to do a little shake of ginger, ground ginger. Okay. Yeah. This one doesn't have as much light. Ground ginger. So you no, know, allspice is its own flavor. So um, mixing all these flavors does not make allspice but it makes a good spice mixture. So we're gonna use a good spice mixture versus allspice, because like I said, my allspice ran away. I looked for it, I couldn't find it, it ran away. We'll let it be ran away and we'll just see what we can do here. Okay, dry yeast, one package of dry yeast. So I forget how much yeast equals a Quarter ounce, 26 ounces, it's a quarter ounce. I think it's like five or eight grams, something like that. So we're gonna use eight grams because I like yeast. There we go, nine grams, close enough. Welcome, welcome. So right now we are measuring out our ingredients for our hot cross buns so that these can rise while we work on making some oatmeal cream pies. All right, so this is all of our dry ingredients and it looks like from here we just need milk, butter, uh, an egg, and... Mm, Milk, butter, egg, technically water, but we'll see if we can get away without the water. So, dry ingredients. Let's take these first or real quick. And spoon, stir, stir, stir. And so with all of this, we'll just end up with colorful flour. So I think that's actually stirred together pretty good. Yeah, there's some streaks of things here and there. It'll be fine. It'll all work out in the end. Okay, so this does call for a quarter cup of butter, uh, one egg, and, well, it says well beaten. It'll get beaten as we mix it in. That happens. Quarter cup of butter, one egg, and a partridge and pear tree. One cup of milk. Quarter cup of 
butter, egg, cup of milk, quarter cup of hot water for melting. If you're melting the yeast, it dissolves the yeast. The, 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 the yeast don't need melted. They will dissolve. You put the dough in a warm place, everything will rise. As long as you have good yeast. If your yeast are dead, then it won't do any of these fun things. Um, but we've been using the same yeast for all kinds of baked goods. My yeast is alive. Right, so I'm just gonna take a sharp knife, and this is a half a cup of butter. We cut half a cup of butter in half. We will need the other quarter cup for stuff here in a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna take this side, and we're gonna cut it kind of into smaller pieces, just so that when we go to work it in that um, these will be able to just kind of dissolve and spread out through the whole thing a little bit better. So we're doing basically the same thing we did with the biscuits on Tuesday and cutting these into small pieces so that when we go to actually um, mix this together, that the butter will, uh, it'll mix in instead of being like chunks we don't actually want any chunky butter today we want all of this to mix in I just don't have my butter all softened so it's um, cold hard butter so we're just cutting it into little pieces so one it will soften faster and two it'll mix in a little bit easier than big chunks so we got stuff going on all right got my mountain of butter chunks butter chunk mountain that sounds like um a place like in a dora the explorer explorer kind of world today we're going to butter chunk mountain all right oh no 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 you see the mountains imploding It's not exploding because it would have been going out. This was all like, even. All right, so we have chunks of butter. Save that chunk of butter for later. We have an egg and a cup of milk. Let's see. So for the last little while, when I've been weighing out the milk, it hasn't been coming out quite right. So um, I'm actually going to use a measuring cup today. My wet measuring cups are behind my um, camera here, so I'm just going to not mess with that. But this one's already out. So one cup of milk, and hopefully this won't be too much. Because that's what I've been finding, that when I weigh out my liquids, it seems like too much for the flour. So we're going to try to avoid that today. And I just want to see what this weighs out to, because, ooh, am I outside of the weight limit on this? Uh-oh. What do you mean? Okay. Let's see. It doesn't like me right now. Okay. Put that on there. 2000 there we go i don't know why it was having issues anyway one cup of milk this is 221 grams so that makes sense oh, well. we will figure out that mystery on another day anyway 220 grams is about a, a cup of milk so that's awesome good to know good to know all right, so in here we have um, all of our dry ingredients. We have our butter. The only thing that we're technically missing is a quarter cup of water. So we're just gonna mix this together and see what that leaves us with. This doesn't even say that it needs to be kneaded or anything like that. So I'm not sure um, where this will be at the end of the day. Now. Before, when I've made stuff like these, they do need need to be kneaded. So I imagine that this needs to be kneaded. It just doesn't say so in the instructions. So I don't know if it's like an underdeveloped recipe, 
if um, it's just kind of assumed. This does it say to me? Let's look. Okay, combine well, shape into a ball, and place in a lightly greased bowl, turning once to grease the top, cover the mixture with a cloth, and allow it to rise in a warm spot for about an hour. See, it doesn't say to knead it, but I'm going to knead it anyway because I think that it needs it needs to be kneaded. <laughs> I want you to want me. I need you to need me. See, I think this needs needed. <laughs> yes, and my singing is perfect proof that dough needs to be kneaded. I don't, I don't know how that works logically, but we're gonna go with it. At least I'm gonna go with it. If you don't want to go with it, then you can go do something else. I guess you don't have to go with it. But even though this recipe doesn't say it needs to be kneaded, um, I'm gonna knead it anyway. But I think that was one of those issues with my millionaire shortbread, is that it was it said to mix it, and I'm like, okay. I'll mix it with the mixer and I mixed it with the mixer and the mixer was too much. See, this is fairly damp already, even without the um the quarter cup of water. So yeah. This um so gluten, which is developed by kneading, is the the basis of what holds air into the breads to make them all light and fluffy. So that's why you don't need something like biscuits because you want them to be tender. And um, yeah, it doesn't happen. So um, this is very damp. I don't think it's supposed to be this damp. I'm not sure if my weight on my flour is off or what, but um, this really seems like it's supposed to be like a bread dough kind of thing. So we're just going to put in a little bit more flour. I'm not sure how much that is. And like I said, maybe my weight is off on what a cup of flour is. I don't think so. Because every time I've looked at it, it everywhere it says uh, 120 grams for a cup of flour. Like everywhere. So... Um, I don't think that part's off. Now, maybe it is. Maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe um, maybe this is supposed to be a wet dough, and I'm wrong. All of these are possibilities. Um, I'm just going to treat this like a bread dough, though. Because um, whenever I think rolls, I think of, like, something more akin to a dinner roll. Even with like um, like a sweet roll or something like that, like I think of something that is light and fluffy and a little chewy and not necessarily like a muffin. Because muffins don't need to be kneaded. They don't have those properties to be kneaded. They, you want a muffin to be light and tender. And if you need it, it won't be light and tough, tender. It will be um, kind of tough and chewy because it doesn't have yeast in it to rise it. Um, and, but rolls and bread, they do have yeast. They do want to be risen. Like they want these things. So. Even though this recipe doesn't say to me or needing, I'm needing. I don't think it's probably like my scale's off, my measurements off. Something about what I'm doing is probably off. I think what it is because my measurements turn out wet. So I'll have to check that part out later when it makes more sense. So right now we're just kneading our hot cross buns. If you look at the recipe, it doesn't say that it needs to be kneaded, but I want to knead it, so I'm gonna knead it. 
And that's one of the great things about either knowing how to bake or and doing things um, on your own. Because then, like, I looked at this recipe and I'm like, oh, these are rolls. They should probably be needed, even though the recipe is like, it just says to mix really well. Mix well. Well, I guess technically kneading is mixing well. It's, it's still mixing, right? I'm mixing. <sighs> Maybe it's just like a really old recipe and they didn't have a word for kneading. I don't know. We need to get Dylan Hollis and, hey, Dylan, make some um, hot cross buns, hot cross rolls, hot cross buns, yep. So let's see, we can get Dylan Hollis to make some hot cross buns and see if he needs them. That's, there we go, a little collaboration. Not really, I don't know Dylan. And I don't know where he lives. I thought he lived in Canada. And I do not live in Canada. I live closer to Mexico than Canada. So, but you know what? Airplanes do travel here. Weirdest thing. So, <laughs> I don't know. We might be able to figure it out one of these days. And this is really sticky. And I'm not necessarily saying it shouldn't be sticky because I don't know if y'all remember when I made, um, Oh, what did I make? It was really, the dough was really sticky. And then, like, as I kneaded it, it came together and it wasn't sticky. So, that's probably what I'm looking at here. So, technically, if you, like, robustly need something, it shouldn't need to be kneaded for more than about eight to ten minutes, according to other baking styles, too. But, um yeah that's according to them and i don't know if that is correct so let's get a dough scraper here so you can kind of get this on the counter because it is sticky like i said i don't know if this is supposed to be a sticky dough I don't know if you're actually supposed to need it or not. I'm needing it because I want it to rise and be all fluffy and be more like, um, like dinner rolls, just like sweet dinner rolls is what I'm looking for. Sweet. Dude, what's mine say? Dude. Sweet. What's mine say? Sweet. What's mine say? Dude. Yep. <laughs> Same but different. All right. See, this is really sticky, but it's also an enriched dip because that's what the eggs and butter and milk does. If this was just like a regular dough, so technically, just to make dough, like a bread, you just need flour, yeast, salt. We don't even really, really need salt, but salt is helpful. Uh, anyway. Flour, yeast, salt, and water are basically what you need to make bread. Um, you can do it without the salt. You can't do it without the flour, water, and yeast. Um, you can make breads without yeast, but to make like a yeast roll, you need yeast. Or to make a yeasted bread, you need yeast. So. Oh man, why did I not think this was going to be this sticky? I thought that this was going to be more like rolls and like come together and not be all crazy like this. This is really sticky. I wanted to stop sticking. Okay, fine. We'll just knead it really hard and see if it'll come up. It's come together like you see when you rip this how it kind of like tears and pulls instead of looks like elastic when something is kneaded really well it looks more elasticy than um like tearing so that's part of the stretch and pull and push and 
going all around. But you see the, it's all sticking to the counter. It's getting really gross. and But it's also like really sticky. And I don't want, um, I want it to come together into a ball like all on its own. I don't want to put a bunch of butt extra flour in it, which I might end up doing. I gotta, I gotta do some more practice measurements because I don't know if I like I'm measuring flour wrong or what's going on because all of my flour stuff when I weigh it out, it's turning my baked goods are turning out extra sticky. Um, did we make cinnamon rolls? I don't think we made cinnamon rolls. What did we make? Oh, wow. I remember doing this on camera before, <laughs> so that's like not important part, but that's the important part is I remember doing this before on camera, working the dough. And this is one of those times where if you have a mixer with a dough hook, this would be amazing. Set this in your dough hook. Let it go for like five minutes. It'd be amazing. It's not what I get to do because I don't have a dough hook here. I really need to go get my mixer that has the dough hook. I really need to do that. The only problem is that's like a 10 hour endeavor. No, my storage unit is five minutes down the street. But I have my uh, storage unit so jingled for Tetris, however you wanna say it, that I basically have to empty half of it and then um, get the thing out, out I need and then put everything back in. Which the first time I took everything in, it took me 10 hours to put everything in. So, and I have a small storage unit. I have like an eight by five or something like that. I, I don't have a very big storage unit. And, Man, the amount of stuff that I have in that storage unit is insane. It's insane. It is seriously stacked all the way to the roof. I have blankets in between any holes in the box. Like, if there's two boxes that aren't the same size and there's a little gap, I have blankets and small stuff in there. Like, back to front, bottom to top, the whole thing is just completely of stuff and yeah, that's not the one we're looking for okay like I can see that the color on this is changing I don't know if that has anything to do with the crazy kneading but and it also like comes off my palm pretty good so it's sticking together a bit are just still going. And like I said, if it sticks to the thing like this, that's fine. It's handy to have a dough scraper to get it up. If you don't, you can use like a butter knife. Um, flat edge knife, knife, just make sure that you're not um, like cutting your counters. <laughs> that would suck, especially if you rent all right, this is taking forever. Oh my gosh. And I know it'll come together. Like, if you've ever made uh, cinnamon rolls, then this is the same as like a cinnamon roll dough. Well, this itself isn't, but this process of it being like this <laughs> is the same as cinnamon roll dough. Enriched doughs are just a little stickier than regular doughs, and they take a little bit longer to come together. But if you'll notice, we don't have any um, chunks of butter in here anymore, so we fixed that problem. That's nice to know. All right. Whew. Okay. Need, 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 need.
So really with this, the main thing I'm trying to get it to do is stop sticking to my hand. If I can get it to stop sticking to my hand, then that would make me the happiest. But it's still sticking to my hand. So one thing you can do is take your dough scraper, scrape off your hand. Dough scrapers are so awesome. Like if you can get a free one from somewhere, that's like the best. Um, if not, you can use like the metal one I bought at like a Dollar Tree or a Dollar Store. Like that would work just fine. It's not like these things stop working just because you buy them from a cheap place. <sighs> but some places like give them out for free as like a promo for some kind of event or something. Some people, some places do. Um, which I think is where this one came from. McDonald Wholesale. Yeah. It's like free goodie bag kind of stuff. Stop sticking to my hand. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands real quick and see if that helps. So, clean hands, I'm going to just kind of lightly flour my hands, just so that there's like a dry layer on my hands. And we're going to scoop this up off the counter. And I can already feel it sticking to my hand. Hopefully, hopefully it won't. So, light coat of flour. I told you I felt it sticking to my hand already. Goodness gracious. Okay. More flour. Scrape off hand. Because I only touched it with like the palm of my hand. So it's not like wrapped around my fingers yet. Let's see if it does. This is, this, I don't know, this is insane to me. It's just not. It's just not forming the way I would like it to. And like I said, I don't know if it's because my expectations are wrong or if it's just um, that it's an enriched dough and so it's not coming together as well. Ooh, tortillas. That's one of the things that I made that was really sticky and that came together eventually. So this is one of those things that <clears throat> the dough should come together eventually. I feel like this one's... Not that it's not coming together, it's just, it's sticking. <laughs> it's being too extra sticky, which makes me think that the dough is too wet. And it could just be that this is more of a wet dough and I just, I'm doing it wrong. Like that is an option. The op There is the option that I am doing it wrong because it's super duper sticky. I don't know why it is being so sticky. This is insane. All right. You know what? This is coming together nice enough. It's come together nice enough. Let's scrape all this up. Boom. Now, I know that when I make, um, see, there we go. It stopped sticking to me so much. We added like enough flour that it stopped sticking so much. So that actually looks really good. So. Warm into a ball. We kind of are in a ball, but um, with dough balls, you kind of want to get everything into one side. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just push around, push around, and I'm just kind of pushing everything into the middle here. 
and doing this. Oh, I love baking. It reminds me of happier times with my dad. He would bake bread every week, the most delicious, and I can't ever forget the smell. It was also wonderful, but if the bread ever didn't turn out, he'd beat us with jumper cables. Really? Wow, okay. That's a little extreme for the bread not turning out. Um, unless he's going to beat the bread with jumper cables. If he beats the bread with jumper cables, it's not completely reasonable. <laughs> wow. I love making bread. Um, I would make it a lot more if it wasn't so much time. Um, now, we did make a, a no knead bread that you just kind of let it sit overnight and it kind of comes together on its own. Which, that's pretty okay. But, so this is just some um, six cooking spray. I'm going to just spray it in the bottom of the bowl. Um, because it just says to oil it and then flip it over in the bowl so that it gets coated in oil, but we don't want it to be like super oily. So we have it, we have it all together and we'll place a towel over it and let it rise for an hour. Okay, I'm just checking the time. So first part done. I am going to scrape this up a little bit so that we can try to have more of a clean work surface. But, um, I don't know. Ms. Foley, are you still here? If you are, um, do you make bread? Because... That's a bit of a story that you put in the comment there. And so I'm not um I'm not sure if that's like a because you're saying it's a good memory, so or happier times, yep. So it sounds like a good memory. So does that lead you to making bread or does a beating with the jumper cables make you not want to make bread? Very important questions. <laughs> so now that we have that rising, let's go ahead and make our cookies. I want to say hot cross cookies, but that's not how that works. Okay, so we're going to move this, and then let's look at the oatmeal cream pie. Recipe. So this is the recipe for the oatmeal cream pie. Um, the ingredients, these are all the ingredients for it, and we have the cream filling. Again, preheat 375. So everything today is cooking at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in Celsius, but that's what we got here. I have a better. Nope, we'll just do this for now. Okay, so 375, good. Um, Parchment and baking silicone mat. We're going to be using a silicone mat. And then um, cream the butter and sugar together and add other stuff. So up here we have one and a quarter cup of unsalted butter. So Let's start getting this together. So it's a one, one and a quarter cup. Um, um, let me bring you the again mixer for this. We'll, we'll see. see. So, so there's, there's our quarter cup from, from earlier. And then we have one, two sticks of butter equal one cup. Why does this keep doing this? So we do different things. All right, there we go. That's much better. Okay. So quarter cup, half a cup, so three quarter cup. And then we're doing baking math as we do. And then we have another quarter cup of butter, or half a cup of butter. 
So that's one and a quarter cup of butter. <clears throat> and sugar. How much sugar do we need? We need, I think it's not has both you know, brown sugar and granulated sugar. So one cup of brown sugar and according to the bread, the, not the, recipe, the um, well, this does say 200 grams of sugar. So I love that the measurements are on this recipe. So I am using a light brown sugar versus a dark brown sugar because I have a ton of light brown sugar. But um, I'm going to put molasses in this. I don't think it matters that much. Anyway, we need 200 grams of light brown sugar. 100, 130, 160. 180. Oh, 209. We're going to leave it with 209 because it's close enough. I'm not worried about it. Okay, so 209. It reminds me of the cleaner, 409. All right, and then half a cup of granulated sugar. So we need 100 grams of granulated sugar, white, white sugar. So, let's see. 40, 60, 80, 101. Down 101 grains of sugar. Ooh, I don't want to count out 101 grains of sugar. I wonder how much sugar that would be. I wonder if it would even equal a tablespoon. Teaspoon or tablespoon? I don't know what you think it would be. Okay, so we have our butter, brown sugar, and sugar, and so all of this is going to get creamed together. Since we need to cream this, I think it's a good idea to get the, um, the hand mixer, so give me just a sec while I grab that. Hand mixer. Mixing, 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 mixing mixers. So, boom, 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 boom. All right, so we have our mixer. Now it's going to get loud for a second. I'm sorry. We're going to cream all this together. And the longer you cream it, the better the outcome. Um, or the more fluffy it gets. So I like my cookies to be fluffy. So creamy, creamy. It's gonna be loud.
Oh, uh, this is getting a little too high for me to get into the mixer. So let's get a spatula and just bring everything back down to the middle. Let's see. Spatula. Turn and mix. And like I said, we're just getting all of this down into the bottom of the bowl because it's just easier to mix when it's all down. All right, so it is kind of, it's mixed together at this point. And so we're just going to go a little bit more so we can get creamy because there are still like little chunks of butter here and there. So there's still some chunks. So we're just working out, we're working out the kinks, working out the chunks, getting all nice and fluffy. So this is getting fluffier. You can see it's a little bit lighter than it was earlier. And it's a lot creamier. Um, we do want this to go for a little bit longer. We're getting good. It's just not quite there yet. Really, really close. Really, really close. Like this fluffiness is definitely what we want. And it's this nice pale color. Also, the things that we're looking for. So we are on the right track. We're getting there. Okay, this is looking really good. Let's see if we still have any butter or sugar chunks. There's a couple. Um, I think it's just my brown sugar is kind of chunky, so it's not getting the chunks out really well. Let's see if we can find some chunks. Um, here's a chunk. Smush. So the best things that you can do for cookie chunk or sugar chunks is either get them out, like this one's too chunky to be involved, or smush them. Like try to smush them, and if it won't smush, like that just smushed, it just took a lot of effort. But if they won't smush, then just take them out. And technically you could see about trying to like sift brown sugar, but brown sugar doesn't sift so much. It's just a good clump of sugar. Oh, there's a clump. So you're just actually looking for dark spots at this point. Um, oh, well, I guess we'll end up with a couple of dark chunks because I'm just 
my hands are getting sore from holding the mixer. So there's a chunk. I don't know how these big chunks are making it through here without getting destroyed because they're not like really hard. They're just chunky. Okay, well, I'm going to call that good enough for today, besides this big chunk. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to call this kind of good enough for now, and we will actually just like pinching through it because I'm finding so many more chunks. Like, why are we having so many chunks? I guess I just have really chunky brown sugar that's not wanting to mix really well. But I'm not getting like super hard chunks that won't break down. So I'm not understanding. Maybe just my mixture's not mixing really well. I don't know. Okay, so get my fingers through here. I'm finding whatever chunks I can find. And I'm not finding a bunch more. I just mostly want to make sure like the really big chunks are out of the way. There's a couple of little chunks, then they'll melt and dissolve into whatever cookie they're in. It'll be fine. You just might end up with like a brown sugar clump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least it's not like a baking powder or baking soda pump clump. Those would be disgusting. Okay. I'm going to go wash my hands real quick and mix this some more. Okay, so I'm just going to use the spatula to kind of stir this a little bit. And then let's get some more ingredients added. What do we have next? So, cream, butter, and sugar. And then usually we do egg and Okay, beat in egg, vanilla, and molasses, scraping both sides as needed. Okay, so egg, one egg. Vanilla, how much, does, how much vanilla does it call for? Um, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. So a bunch of gloves. Vanilla. I'm of course I'm using imitation. This says pure vanilla. It's it's imitation. Maybe not. It's because it says vanilla bean extractives in water. Oh, so this is kind of imitation. Anyway, and then we need one tablespoon of molasses. So molasses. I usually try to weigh this kind of stuff because I don't like how sticky and gross they are. Um, I'm putting a little, I'm just, that looks about like a tablespoon to me. I'm not weighing it out today. Partially because we're using a light brown um, sugar versus a dark brown sugar. And the main difference between a light brown and a dark brown sugar is the molasses. So we're going to mix in the egg, vanilla, and molasses. Let's see where that leaves us.
Now, this is the texture I was looking for before when I was just trying to cream the butter and sugar. And it was just a little clumpier than I was liking it. But this has come together. It's all nice and smooth and creamy. This actually like kind of looks like frosting. That's uh, what I was going for, what I was hoping for anyway. So this looks a bit like frosting and it's come together nicely. And then, so the recipe from here says to set this aside, which I'm not going to because that's how I am. <laughs> but anyway, this is to set it aside and then it probably wants us to um, switch all these other ingredients together and have a nice day. But, <clears throat> See, in a medium bowl, whisk the flour, baking soda, salt, cinnamon cloves, and oats. <clears throat> With a mixer running on low, slowly add the dry ingredients to wet ingredients. The dough will be quite thick, and you might have to mix it by hand. A few seconds after the mixer, drop the dough with a large cookie scoop, or make sure each ball of dough is two tablespoons. Cookies will spread in the oven, so draw each, bowl, each ball of dough three inches apart. So instead of doing it that way, um, I'm going to mess everything up and um, we're going to put everything in the bowl directly, mix it with the mixer, and then see how that goes. Oopsies, I pushed down a little too hard on that. I wasn't just trying to get it to uh, turn off. Here we go. Those are in there. I was just trying to get them to not be messy everywhere. And that's not helping. Okay, so this says a cup and a half. So it says 188 grams of flour. Okay. This is giving me problems. For some reason, when I put the bowl on it and I tilt it, to like measure it out, it's like, no. But if I get it to be flat and then add it, it's fine. So it's 120, 34, 54, 65, 76, 92. Close enough. <laughs> 10 extra grams, we'll, we'll go with it. Okay. Uh, one teaspoon baking soda. That looks close to a teaspoon. You, just, you do want to make sure it doesn't have any clumps. So either put it through a sieve or if you're doing it in your hand like I am, just go through and push out any clumps because this part you really do want to mix in. Like if the sugar doesn't quite mix in, it'll caramelize and be fine. Baking soda will stay in a ball and it will taste disgusting. Okay, half a teaspoon of salt. So we have the baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. About that. Um, baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, three quarter teaspoon ground cinnamon. That's how much we're using. Um, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. So like we did before, we're just gonna do like a sprinkle. This one we're doing a little bit more of a sprinkle. So we had sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, let's see. Um, and then it says three cups of quick oats. So what we'll kind of quick oats here in the back? We're just going with this right now. This is the part that I'm going to use the mixer for, and we'll see if it comes together correctly. It smells a lot like um, pumpkin bread. Probably because it has similar spices.
don't have it. So this is with all the dry ingredients except for the pipe oats. Um, so I'm not going to use the mixer anymore. So I'm going to try to clean off the beaters. Oops, we don't need this chunk either. And then I have a like we have a spatula that we're going to start with, and then I have that wooden spoon we were using earlier, and I'm just going to use to um, do the final mixing because I know that once we start mixing in the uh, oats, the uh, the spatula is bendy; it won't work anymore. <laughs> mm, yeah. I wish there was a better way to clean off these beaters because I feel like that's still a lot of product on the beaters. Oh, well, I can only do what I can do and that's what I'm doing. Let's get all the fun butter, flour, cream mixture. And so, the next thing we're adding is quick oats. For this recipe, it is important to have the quick oats and not to use rolled oats or some other kind of oats because of what we're making. So, bring it together real quick, make sure. It's all incorporated. Yeah, I don't even think I'm going to use this for this part because it's just so sticky. So we're going to, we're going to bypass this so that it doesn't get super messed up. And then from here, we're just going to add with oats. One minute oats. So it says three cups, and um, this is one of those places where I'm going to use a cup. There's still milk in here. I'm going to go rinse this out. Okay. All rinsed out, mostly dried off. So with these, you can just like, get a big scoop, like shake to level. One, two, and three. And see, it is sticking to it a little bit, but that's fine. So, this, we're just going to mix this. So, since this is just about ready, I am going to go ahead and turn on the oven to 375. Because that's what everything's baking at today. And it won't take too terribly long for it to come up to temperature. I imagine that by the time we actually get this, it'll probably be just fine. So, um, we're more folding in the oats than like actually mixing, which is part of the reason why I'm like, okay, let's put the mixer away. Because at this point, it is going to get just really difficult to. Um, to deal with. So with this, I'm just kind of using like a smush, like a sideways smush, 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 smush. I'm just kind of going around the bowl and just smush it out. Just smush it out. Just smush it out. Um, so it actually looks like we have everything pretty well incorporated. Like I said, I am going to mix it just a little bit more just to kind of make sure everything it's really incorporated really well, but it looks good. Looking good, looking good. All right. So, all mixed up. So from here, we need uh, to scoop it out and put it on a baking sheet. So. Thank you. 
Pretty cushy. And I do want these to be fairly big. We have this silicone mat. So I'm trying to put one in each of these. And it says two tablespoons. So I'm going to use this cookie scoop. This is 24. 24. I'm not sure if this is going to be like the correct size, but it's definitely going to do something. So it will definitely scoop cookies. There we go. So I don't know. Oh, you can't see. So I'm going to bring this over here. When I scoop cookies, I scoop it and push it against the edge of the bowl and kind of slide. So we can kind of get like a flat scoop. So I think. Let's see, that kind of fits in that circle just about perfect. So I think that this is going to be a really good size for these. Now, we do want to make sure that these are um, fairly even. We don't want a lot of extra because we don't want these spreading out a ton. They will spread out because that's what cookies do. Well, anything with sugar will spread anyway. It's when you don't have the sugar that it doesn't have to spread as much. Because that's what one of the things sugar does to it. it makes it spread more easily. So, um, so it looks like we're going to get 12 cookies on this sheet. And then we'll see if, um, I think this will probably make two dozen. We're just looking at it and what it's made so far. And with these, you don't want any mix-ins in these cookies because the um, you, you want them to cook as evenly as possible and to be kind of uniform when you're making cookie sandwiches. You don't want anything to be super crazy. All right. So we have our first set of cookies all scooped out. The oven is still preheating, so we'll give that an extra minute. Let's see. Um, all right, so I'm going to set the dough to the side. And I'm going to start putting some of this stuff away here in a minute. It hasn't been heating that long, and it's going to take a little bit. Let's see. The, the recipe says that these cook at 375. Bake for 10 minutes or until cookies are lightly golden around the edges. So we need the oven to be totally preheated. Ah, dang it. Oh, well, it's okay. Um, let's see. We're going to rearrange. Hello. Okay. So we have the cookies all portioned out, and we're just waiting for the oven to heat, to preheat. So I'm going to move this over to the open cabinet and start putting some of this stuff away because we don't need most of these ingredients anymore. Actually, let's remove this and add this. And if you look at the recipe, let's see, what does the filling need? Come on. It's being slow for some reason. Three quarter cup unsalted butter. Three cups confectioner sugar, three tablespoons heavy cream, and one and a half teaspoons vanilla, and a little bit of salt. But we definitely don't need flour. And I don't think we need flour for the uh, the glaze for the <coughs> crust buns either. And so um, we don't need baking soda. We don't. I think we use a little bit of salt, but I'm not gonna leave the whole thing of salt out. Especially since um, 
probably not going to make the icing on um, Wednesday. Um, we're not going to be able to make the cookies. Well, we might make some of them. But I don't think we're going to be able to get into like the sandwich making today because everything is like a while to cook and cool. And uh, we just need to make sure we have plenty of time for those things to do their thing. Alright. My baking cabinet. Everything, all the baking stuff is like right over here, except for the sheet pan. Yeah, I'm just gonna kitchen. Fine with me. Things over there that need to go away in a different spot. But anyway, that's so with these 375 lines, let's see, three inches apart. Three inches apart this way. Maybe not this way. So we might run into problems that way. Hopefully not. Hopefully it'll work out properly. I don't know. So, 10 minutes until cookies are light around the edge. Wow, cool. I'm 15. I'm here for 15 minutes before it comes down. Like this. We're doing pretty good. Right, we can remove the recipe. And right now, I'm just kind of cleaning everything up while we're waiting for the oven to preheat. I probably should have preheated the oven just a little bit earlier, but you can only do what you can do when you can do it. And so, this is what we got. Because I'm thinking about it right. We're in the right box space thinking about things. That's okay. We can clean up. <clears throat> clean up is a part of baking too. Mm, flour and sugar and oats. Yes, you can hear my husband talking in the background. He's talking to his brother at movies. We want to go see some movies here in the near future. And not even like go see movies, it's the new movies that are coming out. You can rent like on demand or um, like stream on your devices. So we're just, he and I have talked about movies that we want to see, and he's just talking to us about movies he wants to see. So that's pretty cool. Oh, you hear that? Oh, All right, so I am going to give the, um, the oven just an extra minute. So when your oven gets up to temperature, it beeps at you to say, hey, I'm at temperature. But that means that the air inside your oven is at the correct temperature. When you open it, you let a bunch of that air out. So, um, we're going to open, stick them in really fast, and then we will have a baking can. Let's get the baking cans. And can we, we see cookies? I see cookies. Add right right to the stage. There, there we go. go. All right. And is there a way to get the um, like glass so that it's more see through? I don't know if it's that the glass has like a oil on it or if my camera just can't see through it. So I'm not sure what that is. But it's a red camera. So when you set the timer, I usually set it for less time than what it needs. But today we're just setting the timer for the ten minutes because ovens always cook weird. 
And so um, there are always lots of people in spots. And so I like to rotate things and check on them before they're full. So that's not always. Okay, and I've done all of this and just now realized we have administrator on Facebook. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. That's okay. Yes, I do. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, what? Oh, it's going to the wrong one. That's why. That's why. Hello. Out here. Oh, I set everything up to stream on my own personal uh, Facebook page, but now I have everything switched over to my baking page, and I forgot to switch this live stream. So I'm sorry, Facebook. Um, but you will get to see the cookies cook, and you get to see what we do with the rolls. So that's cool. Press buttons. Yay! Well, so, baking, rolls, baking. The rolls are still rising. Um, I'm going to take a quick break while these cook to go and wash up some of the dishes that we were just making. So I'm going to take this off and we're just going to have the baking pan and maybe some fun things. So.
that's what they're doing. Okay. So it's been 10 minutes. Let's take a look. Oh, can you see? I see the edges are kind of brown. I also see that they all ran together. So uh, maybe that was a little too big. But if you look at the center, still look a little soggy. So I'm going to give these about two more minutes just to make sure that they get cooked all the way through. Um, yeah. Oh, that looks much, much better. Those centers look a lot more done. Um, here, let me pull them out and do a check on it. You can see them. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Two minutes looks like it was about perfect. See, the center still looks kind of light, so it'll finish cooking, but the edges are kind of dark. Like, we got cookies. The only thing is they don't look like they're, I would prefer them to be look a little more fluffy. So these do need a few more minutes to cool. So while those are cooling, um, we'll actually set up another sheet and we'll make them um, the same size, but we'll make them, we'll have them spread out a little bit differently. See if we can actually get them to sit right. But I know these are definitely, like, this size is not the one. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna bake any different. Well, we'll see. Um, like I said, I'm still gonna go to the same size. I'm just gonna, like we were pointing out before, it's not quite three inches between them, so we will more of a three-ish space to see if that helps. So, hmm. I wonder if these will actually do this spacing guide in this direction. I don't think they're the three inches diagonally. I just don't think I need the three inches diagonally. So if I put this there, that's not three inches. Let's go to 
that over a little bit. Think that'll be good enough? I think so. much the guides on the pens that really matter. It's more like what the actual cookies do. I'm just kind of using these guides in a different way. I'm hoping that they turn out um, that first time it well it didn't turn out badly. It's just not quite what I would like. Let's see what we can do over here. Because we did 12 cookies over there. And then right now we have two, four, six, eight. Let's see if I can put 12 cookies on here. Well, I don't even know if I have 12 cookies in this video. But I need those. We're getting, we're getting there. Hmm. I think we should have like two of these. And I put them on the tray somewhere and then we'll leave them in just so we can find space for everybody. I don't want to This isn't quite a full cookie. Hmm. Okay. So, we basically used up the cookie dough, and we don't have a full scoop. So, what we're going to do is kind of push this down into here, and just like on some of the bottoms of these, we're just gonna take a little chunk off of each one. So you just take a little bit away from everybody else. And we'll make a whole brand new, one. a whole brand new one, or at least close enough. So, mm -hmm. I think I already took from this one. Took from this one. Did I take from this one? I don't know. We're going to. I don't think I took from this one. It's almost like set them sideways if you took from them so that you know that you took from them. Okay, I think that's gonna be close enough. All right, Can't scrape that out a little bit. All right, now let's rearrange these so that they'll actually fit. So, I'm thinking that I took these down a little far. Or maybe putting them on the actual dots will work. I don't know. We'll try it. We'll try it. Worst case that happens is that, like the other cookies, it all runs together. So, I'm hoping this will work. So, 10 more ovens, 10 more ovens, 10 more minutes in the oven for these. cool for a while before transferring I think it's like five minutes. I think it's been five minutes. So spatula. Spatula. We're gonna transfer them over. So let's scooch this over because we're gonna have to cut everybody. Settled. So, like all of these lines, I'm just gonna take a spatula and kind of go in between them. And see, these are all different shapes because of the way they spread out. And so that's what I'm afraid of when putting them together as cookies is that they're not gonna come together as cookies like they should because um, these are all just weird shapes from each other. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping that these will turn out right, but like these are more like this one's almost perfect. It's it spread out this way and it did pretty good, but it's just like this edge is a little, but then you have like this one is almost a rectangle. So like what do you do with that? Do you just like why 
remove the rectangle ones and put them together. Like, I'm not sure what we're gonna do here, but we're gonna keep trying, keep going, and seeing what we can do. Like, these, these are all like one big with you. Oh, this is what happens when you were trying things out. Things don't go accordingly. But, Are these actually? Because um, I'm gonna weigh out one of these cookies. Okay, so you're just gonna. I need to be right handed or I need to swap my kitchen around. Maybe I just need to swap how I do things around in the kitchen instead. Because um, I'm trying to do this on camera, but I keep having my hand cover the camera, which is not helpful. But I'm also not right-handed, and so like this right now feels incredibly awkward. Now it probably feels half as awkward as it would for most normal people because I, once I found out what ambidextrous meant when I was a kid, I was super focused on trying to be as ambidextrous as possible. Like, I want to be ambidextrous, so I'm going to do all of the things I can with my right hand to so try to be ambidextrous. And so I can mildly write with my right hand. Like, if I ever broke my left hand, I wouldn't be in trouble. Um, I might be in trouble for why I broke my hand, but um, I'd still be able to write with my right hand, just not nearly as fast and not nearly as. Um, the work of my mind is clean, but writing isn't necessarily dirty or clean, it's just messy. That's what it is. All right, so I'm gonna let this pan cool a little bit more. I think I'm gonna use this to make the buns. So buns, rolls, and Now, if not, I, I wouldn't grab onto this and just hold on to it. This is fairly warm stuff, so just moving it off to the side. And I still have five minutes on the ones in the oven. Like, look, this isn't, this isn't rising the way that I would like it to, and it might just be that um, maybe it is. Maybe it is rising correctly. Maybe it just needs to be in the oven to rise correctly. I'm not sure. But personally, it's covered. And let it continue to do its thing while the cookies bake, because those actually should be done here soon. So actually, let me move these over to the other counter. And um, let's pull up the recipe for the hot cross buns so we can see how that goes. And we actually might be able, you know, we might make the dough. Yeah. Uh, so the 
just me, don't say me with it, which I did need the dough, because I'll see how it goes, but <clears throat> combine well, shape into a ball, and place in a lightly grease bowl, turn once to grease the top. I've got a new reverse kind of Lava, and mixture of it all, and allow the dough to rise in a warm spot for about an hour until it has about double the size. I don't think it's quite double the size yet, but we're getting there, so hopefully it won't, um, it won't be too terrible. And then shape the dough into round balls about three inches across. Place them at least three inches apart on a lightly greased and floured baking sheet. Place the sheet into the heated oven. After about five to eight minutes of baking, bake, baking, <laughs> of baking, open the oven and use a sharp knife to slash one equal part across into each one about three quarters of an inch deep and allow the knife. Fry open the slashes slightly so that they are less likely to bake themselves close. So that is where we are with this. So let's remove this and make these bigger. So yeah, you can see that these high when you like melt it together. I was trying to keep them from doing that, but I'm going to fit 12 on the sheet, that's all I needed to do. So, either bake 12 on one sheet and have them run together, or make an extra batch. So, just bake 12. So, the next time we'll know that we need more space than that, and then we can put even less on the sheet. So, that's happy news. <laughs> anyway, um, let me get the rolls. This pan is actually pulled down nicely. I'm not sure. Let's check the recipe. I'm not sure entirely how many this is supposed to make. I don't think the recipe even says this is to be for a certain amount of time. But yeah, it doesn't say how many it's supposed to make. It says three inches across and three inches up front. So, um, yeah, this dough is still very, very dense. I don't know if it's supposed to be. Anyway, so I'll put it in the oven. Actually, the timer is on the thing. Is that going? So, if we look at these cookies, we can tell that they still need a couple of minutes. Um, let's say two more minutes. Okay. Alright, so we have the timer going for two more minutes. And we're setting the camera up so that it doesn't fall off of the counter. And we're just gonna sit here, and this is about what I will evolve into. Um, like I said, these still feel very dense, so I don't. I'm probably I probably did something wrong. It's usually I did something wrong, <laughs> so we'll just see. Um, not sure how much dough that is, but we'll just roll this into a ball even more and make that feel smaller. It feels too small. It feels too small. And I do a lot of things that too. So um so this, the the dough just feels really dense. Like usually there's like um with yeast dough there's like punching down and maybe it's because I didn't add the hot water. I don't know. Maybe it's because I actually needed it. Maybe. Maybe I didn't have it in a hot enough room. Maybe I didn't have it in a, um, 
maybe everything's just not warm enough. It's really hot in this house, so I don't necessarily think that's the reason. Maybe I could have just given it some more time to rise. Like, these are all options. Um, of what could be the issue and what is going on, but. Oh, we're just gonna, we're gonna keep moving. We're gonna keep moving, keep going, keep doing stuff, and just hope everything works out okay. I think it will. I have no doubts. All right. Timer. Those look much better. see the centers look a lot more cooked the edges look nice and like as I put it out you can see everything like darkening up so. <sighs> except for the fact that the middle of those are diamond shaped I actually think they'll turn out really good we just gotta give those a few minutes to cool and then we'll do a nice little like juggling and get everything situated around see where we can get everything. Okay, so these are supposed to be three inches, three inches apart. So I'm not sure if these are three inches. I'm pretty sure they're not three inches apart. <laughs> so we'll look as we go, not listening to directions. Okay, so um, this isn't quite working the way I wanted it to. Take this. I cut it and half and by cut it I mean just like rip it in half and then I'm going to take this and make it go into approximate thirds this one's smaller so we'll take some pieces from here and then at that and those seem about third-ish roll it out squeeze it into thirds-ish like this one's small I can feel it and that one's kind of small, so uh, there. Maybe this one's a little too big. And this one feels pretty good. A little bit to this one, a little bit to this one, and I think these are about even. So, doing the ball technique of putting everything down in the bottom and kind of closing it up and then like rolling it out. And then, ooh, this one feels small. Okay, it was large to begin with. Uh, I don't know. Maybe these will be good, maybe they won't. Like, my stuff doesn't turn out the way it should, um, but I also am a maverick and don't necessarily follow the directions like I should, so yeah, it happens. This one feels kind of big, so roll everything down into the center. we're going. Got a cookie crumb. Cookie crumbs left on the pan. We'll see. So well. So get all of these kind of closed into a ball. Roll out. All this closed into a ball. And roll up, roll up, roll out. All right. So we have a dozen. Um, so in the oven, five minutes, and then, so put these in the oven, turn the timer on, and then we'll see about playing, like, cookie juggle. So we're going to take this camera off because we're going to be off doing stuff and I'm not really going to be in the camera. So. This one looking at our lovely clean counter. And then, throw stuff on the floor. Okay, so over here we have our cookies cooling on the rack. But I now need the rack for other cookies. And so these cookies need it more. Um, 
These aren't full cool all the way. They're a little warm to the touch, but just lightly warm. They're not that warm. So, I'm going to take a plate. And I'm just going to stack all the cookies on the plate for the bottom. So that we can put the ones that need to cool on the filling rack. So, like I said, these are just lightly warm to the touch. They'll be perfect for um, the cream pie to make them into cream pies here shortly. I do wish these were a little fluffier, and I'm not sure if I did something wrong so that they're not fluffy, or if these just aren't supposed to be fluffy cookies. Sure. We will figure that out eventually, I guess. Okay. There we go. Cooking rack. Cookies. These. See, this one is fairly round. It's almost like perfect. Makes me really happy. A lot of these on the edges are fairly round. It's only these metal ones that are really diamondy. So, uh, I think it's better than the last batch, but I don't know by how much. So. figuring things out. This is the whole point of this. Uh, baking is overall fairly easy. It's a lot of like following directions, unlike what I do, and just trying it out. Like at the end of the day, if you make cookies and they don't turn out the way you wanted them to, then it's not the end of the world. It's just cookies. And, and, um, There's not a lot of ways to really like mess up cookies so that you just can't eat them like at all. Um, they might not be what you were wanting. They might not be what you were expecting, but they're still probably edible and they're probably still really good. Like, we probably don't really have that many issues with the cookies themselves. It's probably more of a, oh, it just didn't turn out the way I was wanting it to. Like my Rice Krispie Treats. No, those are not good for eating as Rice Krispie Treats. Like, oh, I really wanted them to be Rice Krispie Treats, but they're just way too hard. Like, you might make good dog treats, but I don't know if you want to give your dog a good, like, cereal, uh, like, fruity pebbles kind of rice crispy cereal and marshmallows with butter. Like, I don't think any of that would hurt a dog. I just don't think you necessarily want to like give it to your dog either. But, um, they are really, 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 really crunchy. And I think that a dog would enjoy that crunch, but you don't need to give a chance to dogs. We also don't need to eat it. Eat it. Because it's super crunchy. You might break a tooth. But, Could send them into outer space. Yeah, we could send them into outer space. Um, like we're gonna, I'm gonna cut some cereal at some point. All right, so let's move these out of the way. Cool. And then let's come a little bit closer. And then we'll start putting our X's or crosses on these buns. So, um, long enough. These aren't rising like at all, so they have me a little nervous. But I'm gonna go on an X pattern just because I'm not trying to 
like hit the ones next to it. And I think if I were to do like just a plain um, like forward and back across that it would get the one next to it. <laughs> Why is this not good? cutting properly? Hmm. Where's my razor blade when I need it? I know where it is, I just don't feel like taking it out. Because <sighs> back when I was doing a lot of sourdough, I see like these are now sticking together and that was the whole point, is that you don't want them sticking together. But when you go across, it sticks them together. So I'm just like, I. Ah. I don't think there's any winning right now with these. All right, hot cross buns and I are not getting along. Maybe I need a sharper knife. I actually need to go get my um, razor blade. I don't know. These look more like dumplings than Hot cross buns now. So, let's see if I can just kind of separate these a little bit. Because they're supposed to cook a certain way. And they're just not working out like that. Like, it's like, it says to let the knife like separate it. But they're not separating. Separate. Separate. Maybe it would be better if you like went to the center and did out on all four versus like trying to cross it. Maybe that was, maybe that's my problem. Let's just go from the center and see if we can separate these. They don't look terrible. They just don't look like they're coming together correctly. All right. So back in the oven for like another 15, 20 minutes or something. Oh, they don't look terrible. They do look kind of mushy though. So, so a timer for 15 minutes. Um, and hopefully that'll work out the way we want it to. is pulling. I'm going to put this in the Alright, let's look into making the um, filling for the oatmeal cream pot. Do we? Uh, 
Oh, like two tablespoons. Oh, two
healthy. So let's see what Jane helps everything out. Yeah, we moved here from like a native place and um, some of the ingredients that we brought with us that won't because they were exposed to like very damp air. Now we're like, we're getting to the end of a lot of those things, so it shouldn't be around for much longer than a few things are weird and floppy and stuff like that. But Just not having sugar. 
out the rolls. Um, they're lightly brown. They look like something. Um, they need to be more brown. So we're going to give them five more minutes. Um, 
if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can use um, a plastic bag, um, preferably like a medical bag. You really want to use like a grocery bag, that's obvious, but. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to fill up the rest of all of these. just came out of the oven so they say dark brown that's not dark brown and it says cook to 15 to 20 minutes so that's 20 minutes I think at this point what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the oven off and then um set the timer for five minutes oven off timer set for five minutes we're doing good so Let's take this other set of cookies and see about matching these up with cookies. So you have this one, which is really round, but then all kinds of shapes, especially since I dined them. Like, I have way of it. Okay, so these two look fairly square. Um, yeah, those two look like they fit together. Yeah. 
buns. Oop, those are definitely brown now. I like it. They browned up nicely. Um, they're crossed-ish, and these get like, um, like a glaze. It's like orange juice and sugar kind of glaze that's gonna go over it. I'm gonna wait until they're cool before I do that, but let's 
going to take off this camera and we're going to go just to the other side. didn't quite turn out, at least the way they, they look and the, they didn't really rise like they were supposed to, so um, I'm not sure how well they turned out, but they look good, they look decent, and so um, I'll make the glaze later and put them over it when they cool down. We have our oatmeal cream pies, which those look awesome. Like, if the hot cross hot hot bun for a fail, the oatmeal cream pies are not. So. We at least have one more. One or two? I don't know. We got half of them. We have a good product. I'm happy. Um, next week, we're doing stuff for Easter. And I'm not sure what the challenge is yet. We'll find that out tomorrow. So I will put up a poll as soon as I can remember to put it up. And we'll figure out how that, um, what we're making for Tuesday. For Thursday, we're making marshmallows. And right now, the poll says that we're making lemon blueberry blondie. To make lemon blueberry blondies, go um, to the YouTube page and vote on the poll under the community tab, and so we can maybe edge out the blondies into something else. If not, then we'll have blondies. Blondies are delicious. Um, yeah, if you like what I'm doing here, like and subscribe, and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye.